Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Many places in the scripture, we hear the phrase, wait upon the Lord. And that is wise counsel. Because in reality, we really don't have any option. If we are foolish and we take matters into our own hands and try to push things according to our time desire, it's only going to make matters worse. No, a wise individual, they wait upon the Lord, praying, praising God, and believing that God, He will move at the perfect time. And that change that we desire will be a godly change and not one that we manufactured because what we create is never pleasing to God. Well, with that said, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Genesis and chapter 41. The book of Genesis and chapter 41. Now, we left off last week and Yosef was still in prison, but there was a change. Remember how chapter 40 began, where it says, Vayihi achar hadvarim ha'ele. And it came about after these things. And we learned last week that that is a Hebrew idiom that speaks about a, a change, a change in a situation. And so we could have anticipated that. And with the chief cupbearer and the chief baker coming into prison with Yosef and dreaming dreams revelation, dreams God in this context was using. Yosef, he saw this as an opportunity for himself. Why? Because one of the proper interpretations of that dream, the first one, was that the chief cupbearer, he was going to be restored back to his position. And Yosef, he had been faithful in ministering to them in prison and now faithful in interpreting his dream, a dream of restoration. And now it was going to come about. In fact, it had, and Yosef had made a request. He had stated his innocence to the chief cupbearer and now being restored back to this influential, this important position of counseling Pharaoh, he could intercede in Yosef's behalf. Him being innocent and having done nothing wrong. Well, we're going to see that this was not the outcome. Of course, we remember that the chief baker, he was put to death. So we learned a little bit about judgment, the two aspects of God's judgment. And now we're going to continue on in chapter 41 and verse 1. We read here, Vayhi mi ketz shanatayim yamim. And it came about after or at the end of two years of days. Now I want to translate this very literally. It says, and it came about, but the word is miketz, from the end of two years of days. Now, shenatayim yamim, it is a reference for us. Because two years had passed, but we have that extra word, days. We really don't need it. But we are taught by the sages of old, there is nothing meutar, that is, there's nothing extra or unnecessary in the scripture. So what is the implication of two years of days? Well, the answer is very simple. Two years went by, 
And Yosef endured this day after day after day. So it just wasn't two years later, but day after day, Yosef was waiting for that change that he thought would be coming soon that he was waiting for, but it did not take place. Secondly, it's not after two years of days, but from two years of day. So it anticipates what's going to happen after this allotment of time. Now, we read something else. Joseph, he has been in prison now for approximately 12 years, according to the best calculations. He has endured much. He has suffered a great deal. But now, for a variety of reasons, the time is at hand for Yosef to be released and to be positioned, and here's the key, where God wants him to be. Here's a question that each of us have to answer, and that is this. Are we willing to wait, sometimes wait in enduring hardship, suffering, misfortune? Are we willing to wait and endure faithfully until God moves and positions us where he wants to be? Now think of this. When Yosef was back in the land of Canaan, could he have ever imagined that he was going to be before the king of Egypt, and we know the rest of the story, become the leader of Egypt, this mighty empire at that time? What would be the most powerful government empire in all the world at that period of time? Absolutely not. And it was only by submitting, being faithful, doing the things and saying the things that God placed upon him that led him. And all of these things that he endured, they prepared him for successfully carrying out God's will. So if you're wise, you're going to do this. You're going to pray, God, I realize that, that you may lead me or you may allow me, whatever the case might be, to endure hardships, sufferings, uh, uh, tribulations, afflictions, and such, but you will use them to change me, to prepare me for where you want me to be and what you want me to do. And I'm all in. I am committed to what your will is for my life. I will wait I will wait prayful, prayerfully, and I will wait in praise and worship of you until that happens. Now, are we willing to do those things? Because if you're not, you don't want to be used by God. If not, you don't want to be a vessel that will be utilized for his glory. Waiting upon the Lord and enduring, this is a part of serving God. So we read here, look again at verse 1. And it came about from the end of two years of days, that's how it's literally written, and Pharaoh dreams. So Pharaoh dreams, and behold, we find here in this first verse what his dream is. Behold, standing upon the river. Now, this presumably would be the Nilus, the Nile River, Verse 2, and behold, from the river comes up seven cows of a pleasing appearance. Now, it's a good or an appropriate appearance. It's a word, yafot, parot yafot, good-looking cows, in other words, in appearance. We read here that they were healthy in the flesh. And they were grazing in the meadow. So the first dream, seven healthy, good-looking cows by the river, having come up uh, from the river, and now grazing uh, in the meadow. Verse, verse 3. And behold, seven other cows came up after them 
from the river. And it says, Ra'ot mar'e. Ra'ot means evil or bad or, or not fitting. So these cows were, were poor in appearance. They were thin in the flesh. And they were standing near the cows upon the bank of the river. So apparently these seven, what we might say is inferior or ugly or thin cows, they were standing next to those first seven healthier and better in appearance cows. And notice what happens, verse 4. And the cows that were, were inferior in appearance and thin in the flesh, they devoured, and this is important, they devoured the seven uh, uh, cows that were pleasing or pretty in appearance and healthy. Now, that should not be, but this was the case. So we see something here that is abnormal. What does that mean? Well, God is at work. Now, I realize that this is only a dream, but as we have found here in the book of Revelation, dreams are revelation. Dreams are communication from the heavens to this world. And these dreams, and here's an important principle, these are dreams that the recipient of them, <laughs> they are burdened by, they are distressed or bothered, and they know, they know that there is significance in them. I mean, we dream all the time, but these are unique. And they do not originate with the person, but they come from a heavenly location. So look, if you would, to this verse, next verse. We read here at the end, actually, of verse, verse 4. Not only did these uh, devour up the healthy ones, it says, Vayikat Paro, and Paro came to the end, meaning he woke up. But notice what happens, verse 5. And we've all had that experience. When we wake up after a dream and we go right back to sleep, that's what Paro did. Verse, verse 5. And he slept and he dreamed a second time. And there's similarities. Behold, seven Shibolim. Shibolim is a, a ear of corn. So seven ears of corn, and notice what it says, went up from one stock. So one stock of, of, of corn with seven ears upon it. And it says that they were healthy and good. Verse, verse 6, and behold, seven ears that were thin and scorched by an east wind sprung up after them. And we're going to see something similar, verse 7. And the ears that were thin, they devoured, they swallowed up the seven ears that were healthy and were full. Verse 7 at the end. And Paro, he came to the end, meaning he woke up, and behold, a dream. So he realized, and this is important because the way the Hebrew says here is that he had a dream. There was two aspects of it, but the text is telling us in actuality there was one dream, two parts, but one dream. Verse 8. Vayhi vaboker, and it came about in the morning. Now we've already seen that that boker morning has to do with light, and there's going to be illumination. There is going to be the truth from God placed in this situation, and this truth is going to have several implications to it. The first involves Yosef 
that we're going to deal with in this lesson today. So verse 8 once more. And it came about in the morning, we read, Va, or excuse me, Va yit pa em rucho. Now, this verb that begins a sentence, it has to do, we get the Hebrew word bell from it. And this is like ringing a bell. So his spirit, rucho, his spirit was, was ringing inside of him. He was disturbed by this. He was, was just constantly, as a bell rings back and forth swings, and this was what was going on inwardly because he knew that this was of significance. So once more, verse 8. And it came about in the morning that his spirit was disturbed, and he sent and he called all the Khartoumim, all the Khartoume Mitzrayim, all the uh, enchanters or the, the soothslayers, we might say, of Egypt and all her wise ones. So her being Egypt. Now, this shows how much Pharaoh wanted to know the interpretation. Now, we're studying as well the book of Daniel on our weekly television show. And there is similarities, are there not, between Pharaoh's dream and Yosef coming and interpreting it when the wise men of Egypt, or in Daniel's case, the wise men of Babylon, they were unable. And we see here, these wise men, and I use the phrase so-called wise men, well, they were intelligent in the things of this world, or they were able in some supernatural means to, to do tricks and deceive and, and fortune tell in a, a false way, but they were not able to have any understanding of God's revelation. No, it takes a man of God, a woman of God for that. So he called for the enchanters of Egypt and all of her wise ones and Pharaoh told to them his dream but no interpretation of them to Pharaoh so they could not offer any interpretation any solution to that dream verse 9 now before we look at verse 9 we need to realize that, that this would be rare because they could always come up with something. You might recall in the book of Daniel, they said once, if you just tell us the dream, we'll be able to give you the interpretation. But we can't do what you're asking, tell us, telling you what the dream was and its interpretation. You have to meet us halfway and we'll be able to. Well, later on the book of Daniel, that happened and they were unable and here again in the book of Genesis, in our study, they heard the dream. He told it, but they could not give the interpretation. Verse 9. And then the, the captain of the cupbearers, he spoke to Pharaoh saying, My sin. Now, the sin that he's referring to is that he had agreed when Yosef made known, and this is where we finished up last week, he had promised Yosef that when this, this became fulfilled, that is his restoration back to being the king's cupbearer, when that occurred, he would remember Yosef and share with Pharaoh that there is a Hebrew man who's in prison unjustly. But notice two years, two years had transpired and there was no remembering of Yosef. He was left there by himself. So he says here, my sin, I, and the word here is cause to remember today. He made mention of it, his sin. So he uh, says what happened. He says, look at verse 10. 
Pharaoh was angry, that exceedingly anger, that enragement. He was very angry with his servants or concerning his servants. And he sent me into custody in the, the building of the chief of the uh, butchers or the chief assassin. And with me, me and with me was also the chief baker. And verse 4, 11, we dreamed a dream in one night. So one night we both had a dream, I and him. And it says, look at the end of verse 11, this important phrase, Ishke Petron, Chalamo, Chalamno. A man according to the interpretation of the dream that we dream. Meaning this, each one of us, what happened to us? was the interpretation of each of our dreams that we had dreamed. So the dreams were rare. But here's what he says. Look now at verse 12. And there with us, Na'ar Ivri, there was a, a young Hebrew man. Now that word, Na'ar, implies uh, an individual who is maybe like a teenager in this or or early 20s now Yosef at this time he's a little bit older than that he's around if we're not mistaken in his early 30s so he says and there with us a Hebrew young man a servant of the chief butcher or the chief uh, uh, executioner and we told to him, and here's what it says at the end of verse 12, and he interpreted for us our dreams. A man, according to his dream, that was solved. So he says again, exactly what his interpretation was that he gave, thus was the reality of each man. Now, what he's saying here in the biblical language is very simple to discern. He's saying his interpretations were factual. This one knows truly, not like these, these khartoumim, these false wise men, not like those, but in reality, he knows the interpretation of dreams. Now, verse 13. And it came about just as he interpreted for us, thus it was. I was restored unto my posts. And he, it says here literally, and him hung. So he was hung, but it's emphatic. Him was hung. Verse 14. And Pharaoh sent and he called Yosef. Now imagine we see here that there's now a connection between Pharaoh and Yosef. And this has to do with the dream that Yosef had all the way back many years ago, approximately 12 years ago, when he was in the land of Canaan. Now he saw the results but he didn't see the process on how to get there. And that is a very important principle for you and me to learn. Many times we are given what the results are going to be. And we have that, that burden, that desire for that. But we don't know the process, those things that we have to endure to arrive there. And why is that? Because we have to walk, that is, live in faith. How do we understand that? Live trusting God. So all that took place, and I want to emphasize this, all the suffering, the hardship, the enduring, the injustice, the false accusations, all of that, along with the loneliness, being separated from his family, all these things, they work together for good, in the life of Yosef. So let me speak just directly to you right now. You who say, yes, I want the will of God. 
but it seems so far away. Well, think about Yosef for a moment. Having this dream that he was going to become the leader of the family, that they would all bow down to him, and now he hasn't seen any of them, and his prospects for seeing them are very slim in his mind because he has gone from being a slave in a chief official in the Egyptian empire now to a lowly slave, having been wasting away in prison for 12 years. But one day, the day that God wants it to, like that, we're going to see a change. And it's going to happen quickly. God, so frequently, it may seem slow, it may seem hard, but when God says, yes, it happens rapidly. And what is the reason for me saying this? Well, let's go back to where we left off. Look at verse 14. And Pharaoh sent and called Yosef. Now, the rabbis point out that there's something significant. When we look at this, this text, especially the last few verses, there has been an emphasis upon pronouns. Him, 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 or me, 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 depending upon who's talking. But now we see something different because here we find Yosef's name being mentioned. It does not say, Vayishlach paro veikra oto. And Pharaoh sent and called him. We know who the him is, Yosef. But his name appears there. And that is significant because it shows an identity. It shows a, a person, a recognition. What it's saying here is that Pharaoh recognized Yosef by name. He called him by name, and that's important. It says, Vai Ritsuhu, and they caused him to run. Now, your Bible probably says, and this is fine, they rushed him, they hurried him, but literally it's the hithil, which is the verbal stem of causation. And it's a verb run. So it's they not ran, but they caused him to run from the boar, from the pit. And again, this is a significant word relating to tomb and the decay and just uh, uh, something very, very uh, bad. So now there's a change. And they shaved him, and also it says that, that he was clothed with garments. So notice that there is a transformation. He was shaved, and they put new garments now, all of this is to show a, not transition, but a transformation. And here's what we need to see. Even though in one day there was that manifestation of the transformation, that transformation really took place over that period those of, of 12 years. We see the manifestation of that. See, Yosef, he was in a hole in a dungeon, in a prison. And his flesh, the, the physical, was decaying. But the spiritual was being transformed. So when you're going through hard times and, and difficulties and being made to simply endure and trying to press on and it's difficult to press on, realize that's only fleshly. That those things that are difficult, painful, sometimes full of sorrow, those things are working in the inner person to bring about a spiritual transformation. And that's why, remember what the text says. Over and over we hear, and God was with Yosef. God was with Yosef. What was he doing? Working in his life. So don't discount these hard times, these, these misfortunes from a human perspective. Realize this is God being faithful to, to 
complete the good work that he began in you. So they, they caused him to run from the boar, from the hole, from the dungeon. And he was shaved and he was, was, had a change of clothes. All this is transformation. And he came to Pharaoh, Vayavo. Now, we would expect it to say, Vayavihu, they brought him to Pharaoh. But it doesn't say that. And he came to Pharaoh. Now, the emphasis here is on him being in charge of the situation. It is because of this transformation that he is going to actually take leadership in this, this encounter with the king of Egypt. Verse 15. And Pharaoh said to Yosef, here again, does not say, Vayomer Paro el, uh, or Leoto, to him. Lo, it would be, Vayomer Paro, lo, doesn't say that. It says, and Pharaoh said to Yosef, a dream I have dreamed, but there is no interpretation with me. So he has the dream, but he doesn't understand it, and he is greatly burdened by it. Now, here again, what we see is this. I mean, it's almost as though the government of Egypt, this, this world-leading empire, has come to a halt because Pharaoh had had a dream. But here again, not your typical dream. He knows inwardly. It is raining against his soul that this has significance. He says, verse 15, a dream I have dreamed, but an interpretation there is not with me. And I have heard concerning you saying, you hear a dream and an interpretation is with it. So you're saying you hear a dream and with that hearing comes an interpretation with it. Meaning you have a gift. Now, the way it's written in Hebrew is unique, odd. What we would say is unorthodox. But the reason for that uniqueness is to emphasize something. Pharaoh realizes. I mean, you hear a dream and with that comes an interpretation. You hear both. No one else does. You do. Now, the wrong conclusion that Pharaoh is reaching, reaching is that it has to do with Yosef. He is not including God in this, and we're going to see that's exactly the first thing that Yosef does. So he says, I have heard concerning you saying, you hear a dream and there's an interpretation with it. Verse 16, our last verse in this installment. Vaya'an Yosef et paro. And Yosef answered Pharaoh, saying, Biladai. Now, this is important because he's saying, without me. It is a very strong way. Once again, it is unusual. It, it captures our attention. He's saying, Biladai, without me. This has nothing to do with me. It's God. I'm just a vessel of God. Now, we need to stop for a moment and realize something. Even though Yosef had that dream that his brothers would be bowing down to him and also his father, his parents, understand something. He understood that this wasn't about him, but God using him. And in this same way, he's saying, it's not about me. Notice what he says. Elohim yane et shalom paro. God, he will answer the shalom of Pharaoh. Now, once more, it's unique. The shalom. What is shalom? Don't say peace. It's fulfillment. God will answer and give the fulfillment what this dream is going to fulfill in Pharaoh's life. 
He's telling him, this has to do with the will of your life. It is going to involve one of the most important times in Pharaoh's administration. And Yosef is being brought, he's there to reveal it. And as we'll see in the upcoming lectures, not just to reveal it, but to play a major role in it. Now let me close with this. It is so significant that this young Hebrew man who has spent more than a third of his life, think of that, more than a third of his life, more than half his adult life, he has spent where? Bebor, that is in a pit, a dungeon. He has not eaten well. He has not seen the sun frequently. He has worked hard labor, and he has had no enjoyment whatsoever. This young man, no girlfriend, no wife, no family, no uh, true friends, no social, nothing whatsoever. And let me ask you this question. What do you think has, has seen Yosef through this very trying time? You know what the answer is? God was with him. See, if you look at your life and you're saying, you know, financially I have problems. Maybe health-wise I'm sick. I'm, I'm uh, injured. I'm handicapped. I have some uh, disability, or you're unemployed, whatever it may be, if you are a believer, and I hope you are, if you are a believer, you know what you can be assured of? God is with you. He has promised never to leave you nor forsake you. I mean, don't we have pity and sadness for those who go through hard times and they do it alone? Without God being their rock, a very present help in times of trouble. So if we don't have God, well, we are the most miserable of individuals. But despite what we may be in, that, that difficult hour, if God is with us, we don't have to go through it alone. He will sustain us. He will bring us through. In other words, he will help us overcome. And all these things we overcome with him, they are going to be used to transform, conform, change us into the people that God wants us to be so that he might use us in the most effectual manner. So ask yourself this question. Do you really want to be used effectively by God? Or do you have an immature faith, a displeasing faith that says, God, you know, I've accepted you through Messiah Yeshua because I want help with, with my objectives, what I want to do, what I want to make my life. See, there's a very incorrect word that is being used today, and that is the word destiny. Because usually when believers use that phrase, they mean what they want. Their destiny is what they have dreamed up, not what they have received from God. And it's when we combine these two things, what God's will for my life is, and I, I use that term, but really I substitute what my will is. And I think that God's going to grant it, help me, assist me, and bring it about. That is false that is and there's so much incorrect teaching about that people want to hear it but that is not the truth of scripture see many times we go through these hard times so that we will give up our desires and we will seek the desires that God has for us what he purposes for our life so if you're wise, you're going to be praying, God, reveal to me your purposes. Reveal to me in the proper time and prepare me. Whatever I have to go through, whatever suffering, hardships, trials, tribulation, I'll go through them. 
in order that I might be conformed and transformed into an effectual vessel in order to do your will and bring glory to you. That is what a mature disciple of Messiah Yeshua prays and really what he desires. Well, I'll close with that until next week. May God richly bless you. Shalom from Israel. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel. <music>